from the waters of River Karimenu in central Kenya rises one of the tallest dams of its kind in the country. So now this is the tunnel. Tunnel 400 meters to them. 400 meters. The Karimenu Dam is 400 meters long and over 50 meters tall. It took 3,000 workers and over three years to build. Costing 24 billion Kenyan shillings, the dam will supply water to the city of Nairobi, Ruiru and Kiambu towns. If it were not for this dam, the, the life in Ruiru town would be, uh, would be hell. Building it was a huge geological and ecological challenge. It was uh, hard work, it was tough work. And risky. Because it's very risky. For four years, the construction team toiled across this valley to get this mega water harvesting structure up and supplying the commodity to millions of people. The Kenyan historian has been granted access to film this engineering masterpiece. We are decanting this water from the top, taking the cream as it enters into its glory phase. It was here in Kiambu County several years ago that the idea of building a major dam was mooted. Karimenu Dam. Viewed from the sky, it is a wall of more than 400 meters long. A line that cuts through the valley. A spectacular impression of Kenya's desire to tame water from this river and supply it to millions of people for domestic use. Kenya is one of the fastest growing economies in Africa and with a rising population in the capital city of Nairobi and neighboring towns like Kiambu and Riru, the government is forced to harness more water. This issue of climate change, we need to approach it with water storage, water storage, water storage. What the government needed was this. A large pool of water. To get to this, a dam had to be constructed. If you look on the downside, you can see there's a lot of rock. If you look on the upper side, if you look over, you can see a lot of rock. This is a, a rock filled dam. But where we are standing, in between here, in here is what we are calling the clay core which has been compacted in uh, areas of about 350 millimeters, yes. which are compacted to about 300 millimeters, all the way from the bottom. A water project like this requires the building of not one, but four components. A dam, the height of a 20-story building, to harness and collect water from the river. A massive piping system to deliver water to the treatment plant and to the storage tanks, a water treatment plant and terminal tanks for storage of water before piping to homes. People may, may give stories, but the moment that you see it yourself and you see the impact it has on the citizenry, you'll, you'll really see it's a, 
it's a worthwhile investment for the government. We have we are talking of a population of uh, almost 1.5 million people who are served by that uh, water. Therefore, it is a very important dam. We cannot downplay its importance. The basic principle of a dam is to block a river. But to provide a dry working area while the dam is being built, the river must be diverted around the construction site. And this tunnel was meant for the river diversion. It was the first thing that was done to ensure that we create uh, a channel where the water could be uh, channeled through so that we could have a dry riverbed to start our construction. To understand the magnitude of the work that was involved, Engineer Muya takes me through the intake tower to the bottom of the dam. When we get underwater, I'll tell you. And we'll go very deep, eh? He was in charge of the project. So this is like the best. This is the bottom of the tunnel. Nine meters. Hey. Where? Hey. 46 meters below the current water level. And 59 meters below the ground. That is how far below we are. Is that water? Yes, that is water. That, the sound you are hearing from here is the water flowing through the pipes. Not, not a machine? Not a machine. So now this is the tunnel? This is the tunnel 400 meters to the end. 400 meters? Yeah. At the proposed intake area, engineers blasted a 400 meter long tunnel to carry the diverted river. It's literally digging through a massive underground rock. First, builders had to drill holes to place explosives inside the rock that was to be broken. Inside each hole, primers were used to initiate the explosives. The explosive gases generated quickly forced cracks apart, breaking the rock and pushing it into the nearest void. Cracks were then cleared by trucks. How long did it take to, to construct um, the tunnel? It took about a year to do the tunnel. It's not an easy job? It's not an easy job. Because we are actually in, uh, inside the rock now way far, about 59 uh, meters from uh, the ground above. So what was here was just rock. There was a lot of blasting and breeding and removal of uh, that material. It was uh, hard work, it was tough work. And risky. It's and very risky. risky. The tunnel was reinforced with concrete, reinforced with steel. To provide a strong concrete covering, workers first attached steel reinforcement called rebar. The next stage was to cover the rebar and concrete. A sizable quantity of concrete had to be laid perfectly as a single smooth layer. Any imperfection and the tunnel could collapse in the future and that could be detrimental for the dam's integrity. Several concrete pilings were made. Pipes that will be transporting water from the dam to the treatment plant were then laid. They were then sealed with the reinforced concrete. Now this is the tunnel. It was the first thing that was constructed. As you can see, this is reinforced concrete and above it is a rock. I'm told it's a virgin rock. Now below here are pipes that are encased with reinforced concrete. Now these pipes are the ones that takes water from the dam to the water treatment plant. To go at we are completely off network. We are quite uh, deep underground. 
Very it's not network here. I can see all my lines are, are off. <laughs> you can see. Off, oh, Muteja. <laughs> so if you've been trying to call me, I am Muteja for now. Until I get out of this tunnel. <laughs> Once water had been drained from the riverbed between the dams through the tunnel, it left a perfect dry spot to build the main dam. To help that, there was a, another dam. There was a small dam we constructed there. Eh? What you call the coffer dam? The coffer dam, uh -huh. which we constructed to ensure that uh, we keep that uh, construction area safe, regardless of anything that would happen, maybe like uh, a flash flood or something like that. To find a solid rock foundation upon which the dam's foundation was built, the construction area was excavated. Layer by layer, a giant structure made of earth material rose up the river bank. To make sure that the structure is sound and will serve the purpose, the ultimate purpose, we engaged a panel of international experts to move with us during every phase of the construction to evaluate the methodology, the materials, the soundness of, 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 the, of the compaction. If you look on the downside, you can see there's a lot of rock. If you look on the upper side, if you look all over, you can see a lot of rock. Yes. But where we are standing, in between here, in here is what we are calling the clay core, which has been compacted in uh, areas of about 350 millimeters, yes. which are compacted to about 300 millimeters, all the way from the bottom. And this is to ensure that this soil is completely impermeable. And this is what gives this dam the integrity that it cannot uh, uh, seep from the uh, upstream to the downstream, which would be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are standing on uh, a bitumen cover, which is actually a road through which we use for the purposes of in, uh, in inspection of the dam. Basically, we don't allow the public here. The best way of getting the impermeable soil, rubbles and rocks is by excavation and by blasting. All of them are sourced locally. It makes the dam less expensive and easy to build. Principally the dam is, constructing, uh, is constructed using three key materials. That is the, the sad, uh, the clay core and the lock. The clay core and the lock came from the dam Lisafwa as on site. It was, it was not got, gotten from anywhere far. Then the sad filter material was gotten from the river sad internal river allowed Kitui. So uh, the only material that we imported outside that, that area is the, is the filter material, that is the leaf facade, clean leaf facade. 24.6 million cubic meters of water will put a lot of pressure on the dam wall and it is the rock covering that will take the brand. To take care of the seepage under the dam, uh, in this particular dam, a technique use, uh, was used to ensure that we completely seal or we, uh, we seal the under side of the dam. And uh, this was done by a technique called uh, uh, high pressure jet grouting, which uh, involved the drilling of boreholes around the axis of the dam and then pumping in a slurry of cement at high pressure to ensure that uh, every pole, every crack under there is completely sealed to ensure that there will be no um, water seeping under the wall of the dam. Once the dam was 54 meters high and construction completed, engineers closed the diversion tunnel and allowed the reservoir to fill up. 
and submerged the Kofa Dam. Its job was over. Finally, they could open the gate to the pipes that draw water from the dam to the water treatment plant several kilometers away. There's a lot of uh, reinforcement and concrete on all the sides of the uh, tunnel to ensure that it is safe and of course uh, that it is as uh, the integrity to be able to be used without any risks. The same thing goes for the intake tower. The intake tower has been uh, constructed uh, using uh, reinforced concrete. There's a lot of reinforcement which has gone into this construction and that makes it uh, safe. I'm saying, I told you we are 46 meters yes. below the water line. Yeah. And if you know how pressures behave in water, it's, uh, the lower you go, the pressures become higher. Yes. Uh, if this structure was uh, weak, it could be crushed by the, uh, by the pressure of water. But we are here safely because it is well enforced and uh, properly constructed to ensure that it's very safe for us to be studying here. Water treatment begins here at the intake tower in the reservoir. This is where we draw water the, to the treatment works. And it starts from here 